turn to the passages of Scripture when I get to them. But uh, who's got the first request this morning? stand together and ask God to have his direction in this service today. Heavenly Father, we praise you for everything that you are to us today. Thank you, dear Lord, for your presence, the joy of our salvation. Lord, we ask you to move in all these needs. Lord, spoken and unspoken today, let the Holy Ghost minister in this house. Praise God. All glory to God. We praise you for everything right now. Lord, again, keep that heavy hand of conviction on our lost loved ones. Turn their hearts towards you. We praise you for everything right now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. We go to lesson eight this morning. Revelation chapter seven, verses nine through seventeen, and then chapter fourteen, verses one through five, and. It talk, the lesson is entitled uh, God's Servants, but when you read it and study it, it's talking about God's servants, but we can also see a great awakening. And uh, that's what I would make an attempt to talk about today. And uh, as we look at this, let me get my pages turned here and Revelation 7 and 9 and after this I beheld and lo a great multitude which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne before the Lamb excuse me clothed with white robes and palms in their hands and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God, which sitteth upon the throne and unto the Lamb. And all the angels stood round about the throne, about the elders and the four beasts, and fell before the throne on their faces and worshipped God, saying, Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be unto our God forever and ever. Amen. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, What are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came they? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said unto me, These are they which came out of great tribulation, and have washed their robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them nor any heat. For the lamb which is in the midst of the throne shall feed them and shall lead them in the living fountains of water and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. In Revelation 14 and 1, And I looked, and behold, a lamb stood in the, on Mount Zion, and with him an hundred and forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers, harping with their harps, and they sung as it were a new song before the throne, before the four beasts and the elders, and no man could learn that song but the hundred and forty and four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. 
These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Now, throughout the course of history, there have been great revolutions to disrupt nations. And when these things happen, you know, these revolutions bring on a lot of uh, trouble, a lot of turmoil, a lot of tribulation, if you will. And there comes a spiritual awakening that follows each one of these throughout the history. Uh, these are but faint shadows of what will take place, faint shadows of what will take place when the Antichrist reigns upon the earth. Indescribable chaos will come. And Matthew 24, 21 Jesus said, For then shall be great tribulation, such as was not from the beginning of the world to this time, nor shall ever be. Amen. Now, you know, Jesus himself said that. Now, again, I said, with all of these different things that have taken place throughout the world uh, at different times have brought chaos, but nothing, nothing has ever been or ever will be compared to this great tribulation that's coming. And Jesus said it himself, nor ever will be. So it's something serious to think about. Just as surely as the world's greatest uh, spiritual movement uh, that ever took place is going to take place during this time. Uh, the Jews that have desired uh, to do so have migrated back to their homeland now. But many have not been able to do that persecution in the land where they live financially it just wasn't feasible uh, some of them didn't want I'm talking about whenever uh, Israel became a nation in 1948 uh, some of them wouldn't, couldn't because of the finances some of them didn't want to leave their businesses and their families the same thing happened whenever they were released from Babylon to go back to their homeland only a remnant went uh, when they released but scattered uh, out throughout the nations and still are the Jews are and speaking different languages but they're still Jews uh, the scripture tells us here in, in verse 9 of chapter 7 I beheld a Lord great multitude that no man can number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Now, I truly believe, now I'm telling you what I believe. Now, if you come to another conclusion, we're still going to be friends. Uh, I truly believe that the majority of these people that John saw are Jews. I really feel like that by this time, the church age is already gone and, and, and are seated in heaven. But uh, uh, John saw this great multitude and they were assembled and they were clothed in righteousness. I mean white, which was a symbol of righteousness. And they have palms in their hands. Now, uh, a symbol of victory and glory they've come through much and now they've had they've got the victory now although they've been taken out of every tongue they cry the same message it's a cry of praise to God for salvation now the angels knowing of the awful condition that have prevailed upon the earth until this time and no doubt they're looking at why has God been so patient and not destroyed the enemy? 
But one of the elders asked the question, who are these that are arrayed in these white robes and where'd they come from? And uh, it's good to have Doug and Marianne and uh, Logan. Logan with us today. And, uh, you know, uh, who are these? Where do they come from? Now, again, the times of the Gentiles, and we'll see again of the Great Tribulation, uh, and I've mentioned, but nothing compared to the Tribulation of the Jews. And as they're, uh, these Jews, as their calling differs from our calling because uh, uh, we as the bride or with the bridegroom we're sitting to rule and reign uh, with the Lord of glory 1 Corinthians chapter 6 1 Peter chapter 2 and Revelation chapter 1 but there will be a number that will be redeemed out of the tribulation the scripture said that will follow the lamb whithersoever he goeth now that goes back to this great awakening that I just mentioned earlier, a group of people that will be redeemed out of this great tribulation. Now, I said, I believe it might have been last week, that uh, I've heard people say, well, that don't matter. If I don't go up at the rapture of the church, I'll get saved during the tribulation time because there will be people that will turn to God. Now, I'm telling you, again, I'm giving you my opinion here, and I should, and this come back to my mind, I should have looked this up, but it's in Thessalonians. Uh, there's a passage of Scripture that leads me to believe that once we reject the message today during this time of grace, and uh, I really wouldn't give a nickel's worth of a chance of anybody receiving salvation after the rapture of the church. I really wouldn't. Uh, I'm talking about the Gentiles uh, during this time of grace for us. The times that we've been in church numerous times and the Holy Ghost has moved and reached to convict and for us to come to the altar and repent of our sins, and we reject that, and even if we come and repent of our sins, most of the time, and, and I know I may be leaving the lesson somewhat, most of the time, people are only praying away conviction. And then the church will jump up and say, well, we so-and-so got saved today, and we'll set up a baptismal service, and they haven't even prayed through yet. They don't stay with it. They don't stick. Right. Now, I know I know. a lot of times people have been saved for years and backslide. But I'm talking about in this generation we're living in today, people are not coming to the altar and they're not weeping and praying through to salvation. And I know people are taking me to task over that. So all you got to do is believe. And my father-in-law used to say, if you firmly believe, you'll stick with it. And I still believe that too. I really do. And... and uh, but uh, they, they, they don't stick with it. And then we go on and get right back out in this world of sin and reject this time of grace. It's a dangerous condition to get ourselves into. The thing for us to do is to get ourselves right with God today. Today. Now, the destiny of the Gentile multitudes will be that of the temple service. We can find that in Ezekiel. That tells us the temple will be the central of the earthly feature of the millennial reign. But now the day of tribulation being over, uh, these people that we're talking about will hunger and thirst no more. And uh, they refuse the mark of the beast. They went hungry because of the mark of the beast. Many of them have been martyred because of that. And uh, they will not have to suffer anymore. And uh, he talked about here, uh, 
verse 14. These are they which came out of great tribulation and have their uh, washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God and serve him day and night in his temple. I said the Gentiles, these are the Jews, will serve in his temple, sit on the throne and dwell among them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. Now heat is a symbol of persecution. We know that. We, we make the statement, you can't take the heat and stay out of the kitchen, you know. A symbol of persecution. That there'll be no more hunger, no more thirst, no more persecution. Uh, and we've already said they've refused the mark of the beast. They'll be uh, fed by Christ himself. Their suffering is now over, and Christ will wipe away all the tears from their eyes, just as there will be a remnant of Gentiles there will be a remnant of Jews that will come back to God. Now, something that we fail to realize all down through the Scripture, we find that that we find these these pictures of things. We find that Jacob married Leah, and then he married Rachel. Rachel was his beloved. And then we find two different classes of people. We find the Jews, and that's the beloved. God made a covenant with them. Amen. And we know all about that. He made a covenant with Abraham. He made a covenant with Isaac. And he made a covenant with Jacob. But he made a covenant with David that Christ would come right through the seed of David and right on. But they rejected him. They kept going back to idolatry, going back to it, and going back to it. Finally, you might say he just divorced himself from them. I believe it was Jeremiah he, uh, uh, said that he was married to them. He just separated himself from them. And then that was the mystery of the Gentiles whenever he turned to them and they became the bride of Christ, you see. And then... He hadn't forgot them. He hadn't forgotten the Jews. With all that they've been through, and even at the crucifixion of Christ, let his blood be upon us and our children, they said. Amen. You see, then, and, and, and we find the time of Jacob's trouble. We find this terrible time uh, of, of persecution and tribulation that's coming. And as John looks through all of the earth's misery, and in chapter 14, he sees the Lord sitting on the throne. And instead of the sound of groaning, he hears the song of the redeemed. And he sees the Lamb on Mount Zion. In Psalm 132, we find that the Lord has chosen Mount Zion. Now, the last time we talked about this, I went through about somewhere around eight or ten different psalms and called the Mount Zion Psalms, where the Lord chose uh, Mount Zion. And the moment of God's triumph now is at hand. You find by the time you link four, chapter 7 and chapter 14 together because of these that come through the great tribulation and now we get into the 144,000 and we're talking about the great awakening, the great revival that opens up where God can draw these people to him and give them a chance for salvation through Jesus Christ. Now, there's something else that, that I, I want us to notice and if I'm not rambling so much that I'm losing myself and losing you too. Uh, whenever the Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel, then there's going to be a temple. There'll have to be. There'll be a place of, 
of worship and sacrifice again and of, of these Jews and and uh, you know to, to go back to where they feel like that they can receive salvation through the sacrificial uh, uh, animals and so on but then when uh, the Antichrist turns from them and begins to persecute them desecrates the temple and does all of these various things they're going to realize that they've been hoodwinked they've been talked into something that, uh, that, that that's not going to be to their benefit now the thing, amazing thing about it it's all in the scripture and they're going to do it anyway they will be led right in to do it anyway and uh, uh, so whenever they realize that and all that's gone it's been idolatry to begin with we know Christ is the only way so then there's going to be a group of people that's going to lead them back to Christ. Uh, the moment of God's triumph now is at hand. While the earth seems to be going after the Antichrist and the false prophet is deceiving many by signs and wonders, God says, I've set my, kings upon, my king upon the holy hill. Psalm, the second psalm. If you remember during the homecoming revival and Brother Finley preached from the second psalm and with all the prophecy that's to be fulfilled within that psalm. Let's just turn to it real quickly. We've got time. Uh, the second psalm. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of, of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointing, saying, Let us break his bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh, and the Lord shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. We see the wrath of God there. Yet I have sent my king upon my holy hill Zion. I will declare the decree of the Lord has sent unto me. Thou art my son, this day I have begotten thee. Ask of me, and I will give thee the heathen for thine inheritance, and the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Thou shalt break them with a rod of iron. Thou shalt dash them into pieces like a potter's vessel. Be wise now, therefore, O ye kings, be instructed, ye judges of the earth, serve the Lord with fear, rejoice with trembling, kiss the Son, lest he be angry, and ye perish away when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are they that put their trust in him. Now, uh, we see him here as he has, you know, uh, in, in, in this second psalm, he set his king upon his holy hill. The lamb has taken his proper place in heaven, and he will soon come to the earth to take his proper place upon the earth. Now, I'm, I'm again somewhat scattered brained with this this morning, and uh, should be taking more time and having more scripture to back it, but when I come up in church as a young boy and as a young man, uh, we were preached to that once we went to heaven that, you know, uh, there would be no coming back and things of that nature, that nature. But we read the scripture, we find that somebody's coming back with the Lord to rule and reign. Somebody is. And we sing that song, I won't be coming back anymore, and things of that nature. We won't, in one sense, the way the world is present. Right. Right. But I'm telling you, there's going to be some changes that people are not really looking looking at and looking into. And, and just because Christ has went to heaven now doesn't mean that he isn't coming back 
We know that he's coming back for his church. The Thessalonians tells us that. He won't even set his feet on the ground at this time. But then he is coming back to rule and reign. And so he's taking his place in heaven and he will come back for that purpose. And, and the righteous remnant then is seen in Psalm 20. The righteous remnant. Twentieth Psalm, just a short psalm. The Lord hear thee in the day of trouble, and the name of Jacob defend thee. Send thee help from the sanctuary and strengthen thee out of Zion. Remember all thy offerings and accept the burnt sacrifice, Salah. Grant thee according to thine own heart and fulfill all thy counsel. We will rejoice in thy salvation in the name of our God. We will set up our banners. The Lord fulfill all thy petitions. Now know that I now know I that trust the Lord saveth his anointing. Now know I that the Lord saveth his anointing. He will hear him from the holy heaven from the saving strength of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some in horses, but we will remember the name of the Lord our God. They are brought down to the fallen and are risen up and stand upright. Save, Lord, let the king hear us when we call. Now, we, we can see here this righteous remnant, the day of trouble, and the Lord can deliver with strength out of Mount Zion. And then we come to the 144,000. Who is this 144,000? They're called the first fruits of the harvest. The first fruits of the harvest of this great awakening that will take place during this time of tribulation. And uh, we've still got uh, uh, more scriptures later and another lesson that we'll look at and uh, but if I do get into them then that'll be fine uh, I really need to move on from this anyway but uh, uh, as we look at that we got some crying out from the altars and various things there'll be many 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 martyred during this time Again, as we look at throughout the course of history, there have been many martyred throughout the course of history for the, for the sake of the gospel. And, and I believe, if I'm not mistaken, a Stephen being the first one in the New Testament church. And so down through the course of time, there's been many martyred. But then we've got to remember what Jesus said. This will be a time of trouble such as never was and there never will be another after it because this is finalizing the whole thing and so if the 144,000 are the first fruits of this turning to Christ then those 144,000 I really believe in my heart will be the leaders in turning others to God but there will only be a remnant now I remember several years ago the first time I came in contact with Jehovah's witnesses doctrine and if you followed ever followed them much and I quit reading after them several years ago over the course of the years they changed their doctrine whenever they find themselves in error and uh, and especially when they go from house to house and they don't have an answer then they go back and, and get with their elders and leaders and decide how they're going to come back in a different approach to be able to to gain more people to their movement. But they, they came up with this idea that there would be only 144,000 of them be saved. There hadn't, at that time, been 144,000 of them in their group. And then now they've gone beyond that. So now the 144,000 among them will be the rulers and such and such among them in the new kingdom. And but uh, I, in my opinion, and this is my opinion, those are the leaders 
that will bring the rest of those around to hear the gospel because uh, these people have been free from satanic uh, defilements. They've been purchased by the blood and they are now instruments to salvation for the number which no man can number that John saw and chapter 7 and uh, verse 9 and I beheld and lo a great number which no man can number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues stood before the throne and before the Lamb clothed with white robes with palms in their hands so somebody has to lead this movement to get these people back to Christ and John sees this number that no man could number but that, that's led by this remnant and uh, today, today while we have time we don't need to be wasted I, I think it's last week I mentioned do we really believe what we preach do we really believe what we say we do if we do, why are we wasting so much time? Why are we fiddling around with our lives while we've really got time to be doing something for ourselves and for others? Now, the sad part about it is that there will be a lot of people saved that have the Lord will give the chance uh, to get in because you know, know you've you know you should. How many times, you know, to make this a little plainer, how many times have you seen somebody that's just about wasted their life and then they'll get sick and then while they're sick, they'll turn to God. I've seen that time after time after time. But what happens after they've wasted their lives and scattered their children and scattered their grandchildren scattered them and then they get in themselves but everything else is destroyed around them and we've seen that over and over and over and over oh we just waste our time waste our time waste our time now I'm not trying to leave a guilt trip on us every one of us have wasted time every one of us have fooled around when we ought to be doing more for God than what we have been and while we've got time, they used to sing a song here, while, while you've got time, make up your mind. You can't be happy just living on the borderline. And I really feel like that today, that we better be doing something more for God than we ever have in our time. Now, I'm not going any further much with this today. It's early, much, much earlier than I usually let us through. But I'm not going to stand here spinning my wheels either. And uh, I've been away last week and, and not as prepared as I ought to be this morning. But uh, as we talk about, again, these Jews going through this great tribulation and those who have rejected Christ during the time of grace going through it too. Many, many, many will be destroyed during the reign of this Antichrist. Many will be. We'll have the seven seals that will be broken. Then you'll have the seven trumpets that will sound. Remember when we discussed all of those things? The seven seals, then seven trumpets following that. And nothing but an absolute time of turmoil. And, and the more the problems persist, the greater the blasphemies against Christ come from this wicked world. And we can see that, just a picture of it now. And, and without getting into too much politics, what amazes me so bad, so much, is that Canada 
right now in the way they're going, uh, they're practically a socialist country. But if you go into their country, you've got to pass, have a passport to come in and they expect you to leave in a certain amount of time. Yeah. But this country, they come in from wherever, especially the southern border. And homelessness, lawlessness, just a picture, just giving us a little picture of the terrible things that's going to be taking place during the tribulation. Just a small picture of it. Chicago, places in New York City, places in many of those cities in California where it's decently warm in the winter and people just live in tents and what have you out on the streets and 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 just a picture of the lawlessness that'll take place during the tribulation time. That ought to get us more excited about the work of God than we ever have been and seek God more than we ever have sought after him that when the trump of God sounds, we as the Gentile people will leave here and be with Christ. I sure don't want to be part of this lawlessness, this tribulation time. If there's any way possible that God sees it, that we can escape it, I pray that it'll happen. Has anybody got a comment before we close? So I want to clear something up that I've failed to. Just think a while ago when you said about people are going to wait until after the Lord's came back to go through the tribulation to get saved. Well, what if you're, you know, we could be caught out at any time, so I wouldn't want to take a chance on nothing like that. That's right, that's right. That's right. Because we have no promise of tomorrow. Go for the way of the grave. Let's stay for the worship service.